Hello, my name is Daniel, and today we will be going through the MC12B from the year 2006. So let's get started. First problem, what is this? Okay, so just we see that this is minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, all the way to minus 1 to the 2006 power, which is just plus 1, right? And so we pair by 2s, 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 and they all go to 0, right? So this, the answer is 0. It's, it's C. Number 2, for real numbers x and y, define x spade y equals x minus y x plus y. What is 3 spade, 4 spade, 5? Okay, so um, we know that this is x squared minus y squared minus y squared. And so if we do that for this, 4 spade, 5, this is going to be 4 or four squared minus 5 squared, right? Um, this is going to be negative 9. 3 spade minus 9, this is going to be 3 squared minus 9 squared, sorry, minus negative 9 squared, which is, which is 9 minus 81. This is negative 72, so this is the answer. It's A. Number three, a football game was played between two teams, the Cougars and the Panthers. The two teams scored a total of 34 points, and the Cougars won by a margin of 14 points. How many points did the Panthers score? So Cougar plus Panther equals 34, and Cougars minus Panthers equals 14, because Cougars won by 14 points. So this gives us that um, Cougars, two, two Cougars equals um, 48, so Cougars equals 24, so Panthers equals 10. It's A. Number four, Mary is about, is about to pay for five items at the grocery store. The price of the items are seven ninety nine, four ninety nine, two ninety nine, one ninety nine, and zero ninety nine. Mary will pay with a twenty dollar bill. Which of the following is closest to the percentage of the twenty dollars that she will receive in change? Okay, so since it's the closest, then we can just round our answers. Sorry, um, round our numbers. So we can just round everything to, to, um, eight. Eight dollars, no, eight five dollars. So eight plus five, plus three dollars, plus two dollars, plus one dollar. This is the amount that she has to pay. Um, and then she pays with a twenty dollar bill, so it's all over twenty, and she wants change, right? So it's twenty minus this much, which is equal to all over twenty, and then twenty minus nineteen. So this is equal to one over twenty, which is five percent, right? So this is the answer. It's A. Number five, John is walking east at a speed of three miles per hour, while Bob is also walking east, but at a speed of five miles per hour. If Bob is now one mile west of John, how many miles will it take for Bob to catch up to John? Okay, so Bob also walks east at a speed of five miles per hour, but then John walks at three miles per hour. That means Bob gains, Bob gains at two miles per hour. And then Bob is now one mile west of John. That means Bob has one mile to catch up, one mile to catch up. So catch up one mile, right? Um, that will take one hour, one hour divided by 2 because it's half of that so this is going to be taken half an hour which is 30 minutes 30 minutes this is the answer it's a number six francesca used 100 grams of lemon juice 100 grams of sugar and 400 grams of water to make lemonade there are 25 calories in, in 100 grams of lemon juice and 386 calories in 100 grams of sugar water contains no calories how many calories are in 200 grams of lemonade so that all together is 600 grams right so 600 grams um, this is going to equal 25 calories plus 386 calories, 25 plus 386, that's going to be um, equal to 411 calories, right? Um, and in 200 grams, that's just this divided by 3, right? And so um, for, for, for that, it's 411 divided by 3, which is going to be equal to 137. So it's 137 calories, it's B. Number seven, Mr. and Mrs. Lopez have two children when they get into their family car. Two people sit at the front and the other two sit in the back. Either Mr. Lopez or Mrs. Lopez must sit in the driver's seat. How many seating or arrangements are possible? Okay, so let's say we have Mr. Lopez and Mrs. Lopez and um, kid one and kid two. We can have those seats and then this is the driver's uh, driver's seat, right? So our probability is when Mr. drives, so, so when Mr. Lopez is driving, drives, um, that will be just three factorial equals six possibilities um and the same thing for when mrs lopez drives this is going to be the same thing three factorial which is six so we just add up these two so these two give us 12 right so it's 12 altogether it's b number eight the lines x equals one fourth y plus a and y equals one fourth x plus b intersect at the point one comma two what is a comma b so we can just plug this in to both of those equations so for a we will get one equals one over four times two plus a so a equals one, one minus half which is one half and for b we have two equals one fourth times one plus b so b is going to equal two minus one over four which is seven over four all right seven over four um that's 7 over 4, um, and so we want the sum of these two. Sum is going to be all over 4 and 9, so it's going to be 9 over 4. It's E. 
Number nine, how many even three digit integers have the property that their digits read left to right are in strictly increasing order? So we want even three digit integers and um, they have to be in strictly increasing order, right? So, so the last digit has to be at least three, but then they have to be even. So our last digits can be four, six, or eight, right? So we can have something, something, four, or something, something, six, or something, something, eight. Four, we have one, two, three, four. If we just choose any two of those, one, two, or three, then that's just gonna, going to order them themselves in, in increasing order, right? So since we have one, two, three, that's, those are candidates. So we have three, choose two. And so for this one, same thing. Um, yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five as candidates, but then we have to choose only two from those. So that's just five, choose two. Um, same thing for eight. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven possible, but then out of that, we have to choose two. So that's eight, choose two. This is three, this is 10, and eight, choose two, that is eight times. No, sorry, that's not eight, choose two. That's seven, choose two. This is seven, choose two, right? Because we have seven values here. So seven, choose two, that is seven times six divided by three, that's 21. And so these all together is three plus 10 plus 21, which is 34. So this is the answer, it's B. Number 10, in a triangle with integer side length, one side is three, three times as long as the second side and the length of the third side is 15. What is the greatest possible perimeter of the triangle? Okay, so let's say that the triangle is like that. And um, one side is three times as long. Um, and so let's say we have sides X, 3x and 15 and since we want the the greatest possible perimeter we want x to be as large as possible that means 3x will be the longest line will, will be the longest length right so this will be 3x this will be x and this will be 15 by the triangle inequality we have x plus 15 must be greater than 3x 15 must be greater than 2x and so x is less than x is less than 7.5 right 7.5 um and so so here x is going to be equal to 7 right x is 7 um so the great, greatest possible perimeter that is going to be um yeah so x plus 3x plus 15 which is 7 plus 3 times 7 which is 21 plus 15 this is going to be equal to 43 so this is the answer it's a Problem number 11. Joanne, Joanne, each bought 12 ounces of coffee in a 16 ounce cup. Joe drank 2 ounces of his coffee and then added 2 ounces of cream. Joanne added 2 ounces of cream, stirred the coffee well, and then drank 2 ounces. What is the resulting ratio of the, of the amount of cream in Joe's coffee to that in Joanne's coffee? Right, so Joe has 2 ounces of cream. Right, that's easy. Joe has 2 ounces. Yeah, and then Joanne, she is going to have... So, she added 2 ounces of cream first. And then she drank 2 ounces, which is 1 over 7 of the whole thing. Right, so then she would have... 6 over 7 left, and then her, her initial amount of cream was 2, so times 2, so this is 12 over 2, 12 over 7, right? And so the ratio is 2 over 12 over 7, this is equal to 7 over 6, right? So, so this is 7 over 6, which is E. Number 12, the parabola y equals ax, ax squared plus bx plus c has vertex p comma p and y intercept 0 comma negative p, and where p is not 0, what is b? Okay, so since p, the y intercept is 0 comma negative p, then we know that c equals negative p, right? Um, and then since the vertex is x value is p, um, so that means that negative b over 2a, this is equal to p, and then since it has p comma p, because of this, we are going to see that b equals negative 2ap, Right, um, and then now since we plug in p comma p, then p is gonna be a p squared plus b p minus p, because c is minus p, and so if we divide by p, um, and then put that there, then we're gonna get two equals a p plus b, and since b equals negative two a p, this is gonna be a p minus two a p, which is negative a p. a p equals negative two, b equals negative two a p, b equals negative two times a p, which is minus two, and this is equal to four. Right, so that's four. The answer is D. Number thirteen, rhombus ABCD is similar to rhombus BFDE. The area of rhombus ABCD is twenty-four, and BAD equals sixty degrees. What is the area of rhombus BFDE? Okay, so we want this, the area of this one. So to do that, let's just draw in line first from A all the way to C, like that. And then since ABCD is similar to BFDE, right? So this one and this one they are they are similar and bad equals 60 degrees right so this is 60 degrees um, and what that means is if we split this like that into halves right then um yeah then um, each of these halves that will be an equilateral triangle right um and since this whole thing and this whole thing is similar right that means these and this they are also going to be equilateral triangles right um and so now we know that this 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 those three lengths are the same yeah, so the ratio is this is 1, and then this will be 3. We have the same height, right? So rhombus BFDE, that is um, this one. This is what we want. So BFDE, BFDE is going to be 1 third, 1 third times ABCD. 
a b c d which is 24 right so it's one third times 24 which is 8 that's c number 14 elmo makes n sandwiches for a fundraiser for each sandwich uses b globs of peanut butter at four cents per glob and g blobs of jam at five cents per glob the cost of the peanut butter and jam to make all the sandwiches is two dollars fifty three assume that bj and n are all positive integers with n is greater than or equal to one no n with n is greater than one where's the cost of the jam elmo uses to make the sandwiches okay so um we have our equation which is n times 4b plus 5j right so because four four cents per blob and five cents per blob right so this is going to be equal to 253 cents right um and 253 we see that this is equal to 11 times 23 right uh, um and so this must be 11 and th that must be 23 so n is 11 this is 23 um and if 4b plus 5j equals 23 then by casework we can get that b would equal 2 and j would that um, and g would then equal 3 right uh, and so we want the cost of the jam only right so jam only jam only this would be equal to the number of sandwiches he makes times five jam the cost of jam that goes in for every sandwich this is n which is 11 times five times j which is three right so this is going to be equal to 165 cents right so this is going to be equal to one dollar sixty five um one dollar sixty five and so this is our answer it's d Number 15, circles with centers 1, PF, radii 2, and 4 respectively, and are externally tangent. Points A and B are on the circle center at O, and points C and D are on the circle center at P, such that AD and BC are common external tangents to these circles. What is the area of hexagon A, O, B, C, P, D? Okay, so um, um, first we, we need to draw some lines. Let's draw a line like that, and one more from O um, to like that, right? Um, and so since this is 4 and this is 2, that means this is also 2, right? And so let's say this is 2. And same thing, this is also 2. Um, and since um, this much is 2 plus 4, right? That's 2 plus 4. This much is 6, right? Um, and so we have this triangle. Um, and so we know that this is going to be root 6 squared minus 2 squared, is, which is um, 6 times 4 root 2. That's 24. Yeah, sorry. Th um, that's 2 times, 2 times 3 squared minus 1 squared, which is 8. So this is 4 root 2. Right, so we have this equals four root two, and now we we see that um, yeah, this this quadrilateral and this quadrilateral are the same, and so um to get the area of the whole 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 hexagon, then we can just have this area plus this area times two, right? So it's going to be two times this much, which is two times four root two, right? So it's two times four root two, and then plus one half of of uh, yeah yeah so it's this triangle length so it's that triangle so it's six so no so it's four root two and then two so half times two times four root two right so this is going to be equal to four root two times yeah four root two times and then six this is 24 root two this is the answer it's b Number 16, regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F has vertices A and C at 0, 0, and 7, 1, respectively. What is its area? Okay, so if we have a hexagon like that, like that, A and C are at 0, 0, and 7, 1, so this is A, this is B, this is C. Um, and so we have the length between A and C, right? Since A, C, since A is 0, 0, and C is 7, 1, that means this length, this is going to be... Um, this distance is 7, this distance is 1, so it's root 50, which is 5 root 2, right? So this is 5 root 2, and its area, it's it's going to be... Okay, so since this is a regular hexagon, that means this is 120 degrees, and so if we bisect that, like that, then this will be right angle, and so this will be a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? So this length to that length, that ratio is going to be um, 2 to root 3, right so this is going to be 2 and root 3 and then root 3 right so this whole thing is going to be 2 root 3 and this is going to be 2 right so this angle so that length to this length is 2 to 2 root 3 right um so we have 2 to 2 root 3 that means that ac equals yeah that means that ac equals root 3 times bc so bc equals 5 root 2 over root 3 right um and then the area is is if we just to make six of these, right? That means it's just six times one equilateral triangle, right? So area, this is gonna be equal to six times one equilateral triangle, which is 
root 3 over 4 and then times bc squared times this squared and that can just be written as 50 over 3 right and so this is going to be um, 25 root 3 so this is the answer it's c Number 17, for a particular peculiar pair of dice, the probabilities of rolling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 on each die are in the ratio 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6, whereas the probability of rolling rolling a total of 7 on the two dice. Right, okay, so um, we have a total total of 21, 21 spots, 21 dots. We can roll, roll 1 and 6, right, or 2 and 5, or 3 and 4, or 4 and 3, and 5, or 2, or 6 and 1. Um, so we have this, 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 and so those are going to be, uh, yeah, so this, 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 that probably is just the same. So that's going to be 2 times 1, 6, and then 2, 5, and then 3, 4, right? Um, so this is going to be 2 times, and then 1, 6, that, that's just 1 times 6 over 21 squared, plus 2 times 5 over 21 squared, plus 3 times 4 over 21 squared, right? This is going to be equal to... Yeah, um, this is equal to 2 times 6 plus 10 plus 12 all over 21 squared. This is 56 over 21 squared, which is just going to be equal to 8 over 63, right? Because 56 is 7 times 8. And so this is going to be our answer. It's C. Number 18, an object in the plane moves from one, one lattice point to another. At each step, the object may move one unit to the right, one unit to the left, one unit up, or one unit down. Um, if the object starts at the origin and takes a 10-step path, how many different points could, could be the final point? Okay, so um, this means that the point, point must be must be in odd, odd, comma, odd points or even, comma, even points. And that is because um, there, this is a 10-step path since we moved an even number of times. And so if we just look at the first quadrant only, quadrant, then we can get a grid. Let's say that we start here. This is the center for these two lines. We are just going to draw one of them because we are going to multiply the whole thing by four at the end. Now, if we draw draw those lattice points, then it's either odd, comma, odd, or even, comma, even. So it's either this, 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 and then it goes on like that, right? And so if you see this much, that's that's I'm, I'm gonna be gonna be equal to we have to multiply this times four right so it's four times and then we have two four six eight ten so we have two four six eight ten two four six eight ten right and so this is going to be four times thirty right um but then notice that we have this point at the end if the object went five right, five up, and five, five down, then it will just be at the east point where it started, so that's also a plausible point, right? So we have to add one more here, plus one, because of this point, and so this is all going to be 121, so this is the answer, it's B. Number 19, Mr. Jones has eight children of different ages. On a family trip, his oldest child, who is nice, spots a license plate with a four-digit number in which each of two digits appears two times. Look, Daddy, she exclaims, that number is evenly divisible by the age of each of us kids. That's right, re replies Mr. Jones, and the last two, the two digits just happen to be my age. Which of the following is not the age of, of one of Mr. Jones' children? Okay, so possible ages are from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And this cannot be um, not, not the age of 1 because the oldest child is 9. If you see here, um, the four-digit number has to be evenly divisible by the age of all of these but one, right? If you see 5 and 7, right? So 5 and 7, 5 and 7 are the only two only big primes, right? Are the only like big prime numbers. So they are our prime suspects, right? Um, I didn't mean that to be a joke, but it somehow went funny. Okay, so so let's consider if 5 or 7 is out, right? So first, if 7 is out, yeah, so if we say that 7 is not the age of, of, of one of the kids, then the LCM of numbers, LCM, meaning the, meaning the least, least common multiple, of numbers, numbers um, is going to be 9 times 8 times 5, um, 9 times 8 times 5, which is 360. Four-digit number that has to be a multiple of the LCM. So if we try to find a four-digit number, which is a multiple of four, which is a multiple of 360, in which each of two, two digits appears two times, um, then this is impossible, right? Impossible. Um, and so that means 7 must be in here, right? So 7 is in. Right, um, so 7 is not the answer, and so let's say if it is 5, 
um, then that will mean the LCM LCM of numbers numbers is going to be 7 times 8 times 5 sorry 7 times 8 times 9 which is 504 right and then right away we can see that using 504 we can make 5544 four, right and so this is a four digit number in which each of two digits appears two times um, and the last two digits which is 44 that is a plausible age of mr jones right and so so this is the right answer so five is not the age of one of mr jones's children this is the answer it's b Number 20. Let x be chosen at random from the interval 0, 1. What is the probability that this equals 0? First, let's look at this chart carefully. And if you see, um, then this just means that um, if x is something times the um, something times 10 to the nth power, right? Um, that means this number is just going to be n. And same thing for 4n. Um, 4x is going to be something else x is going to be something else times 10 to the nth power and so this is just going to be n and so for the difference to be zero that means these n's have to be equal right um so if we were just write the, the ranges then x is greater than or equal to 10 to the nth power when and, and less than so not n, less than 10 to the 10 to the n plus one power right 10 to the n plus one power and this doesn't contain an equal sign because if it had an equal sign and x was equal to 10 to the n plus 1 power um, then this would be just n plus 1 right not n and same thing for 4x um, 10 to the nth power and then 4x in the middle this time 4x and then 10 to the n plus 1 power and then I just said that there's no equal sign right um, and so combining these two then what we get is that x is greater than or equal to, to 10 to the nth power but less than because of this 10 to the n plus 1 power 10 to the n plus 1 power divided by 4 right and so this is going to be 10 over 4 times 10 to the n so this is going to be 5 over 2 times 10 plus times 10 to the n plus 1 and so our possible x values possible x values um, possible x values range possible x values range right um this is going going to be just this number minus this number right because x is just chosen at random from that interval um, and so x can be any number between these two right so that's going to be between these two which is 5 over 2 10 to the n no sorry that shouldn't be m, m plus 1 because um, we just did 10 up here for 5 times 10 to the n minus 10 to the n so this is going to be 10 to the n times um, 3 over 2 right and so this is 3 over 2 times 10 to the nth power and so our n values n values um, these can be negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 and so on right and so right uh, yeah yeah and this is because x is between 0 and 1 so um, that means x is going to be something times 10 to the negative first power or 10 to the negative second power like that and so that's why our n values are just negative integers and so um, if we just do the sum of that right um, um, then the sum, yeah, so then the sum, sum is going to be um, this much, right? So it's 3 over 2 times 10 to the minus 1 plus 10 to the minus 2 plus 10 to the minus 3 and so on, right? And so this is going to be 3 over 2 times 0 0.1111111 all the way, which is 3 over 2 times, which is 3 over 2 times 1 over 9. So this is going to be 1 over 6. So this is our answer. It's C. Number 21. Rectangle ABCD has area 2006. An ellipse with area 2006 pi passes through A and C and has foci at B and D. What is the perimeter of the rectangle? And the area of an ellipse is AB pi, where 2A and 2B are the length of the axes. Okay, so let's just draw draw this diagram. Yeah, so that would be our, our ABCD. Um, and let's say that these side lengths, they are X and Y. Right, um, so what we want is 2X plus 2Y. Um, and then now let's look at the ellipse. And so let's say that the ellipse would go from here, one half, yeah, so that's one half axis, and this is the other half axis. So let's say that this length is A, and this length is B. That would give us that from the rectangle, first of all, we have XY 2006, and then from the area of the ellipse, we have that AB, we have that AB also equals 2006. One more thing that we have to, have to notice is that 2b is the length of the whole axis, right? So so this whole thing, that's 2b. 2b is always going to be equal to this plus this value. Um, and we know that this and this are equal. So that means that this value equals x plus y. 
So 2b equals x plus y, 2b equals x plus y, um, and what we want is x plus y plus x plus y, which is 2 times x plus y. So 2 times x plus y, this is going to be equal to 4b. So 4b is what we want. This is the answer. We can also see that this b, that is going to be equal to this length, right? Um, this is also going to be b. That's because since x plus y, that's equal to the sum of these two values, but then for these two, then, then this one and this one would be the same. So that's why this must be b. Um, and since this is a right angle by the Pythagorean theorem, we see that half of bd, right? Um, half of bd, this is going to be root b squared minus a squared. Um, and so bd is going to be 2 times root b squared minus a squared, right? Um, but then since this is y and this is x, then we can also get the value of bd based on the rectangle, right? Um, and so this is also going to be equal to, this is bd, and this is x, and this is y, and this is a right angle, so we can get root of x squared plus y squared, right? Um, and this is going to be root x plus y squared minus 2xy, this is equal to the root of x plus y equals 2b, so 4b squared minus 2 times xy, which is 2 times 2006, which is um, 4012, right? And so we can take out 4 from there, so that's 2 root, um, 2 root b squared minus 1003, right? And now, take a look at this one and this one. So 2 times, so 2 root b squared minus a squared equals 2 root b squared minus 1003, and so we see that a squared equals 1003, so a equals root 1003. And then since a b equals 2006, that will give us b equals 2006 over root 1003, which equals 2 root 1003. We wanted 4b, that's the answer, so 4b would equal 4 times 2 root 1003, this equals 8 root 1003, right? And so this is the answer, um, it's c. Number 22, suppose a, b, and c are positive integers with a plus b plus c equals 2006, and a factorial, b factorial, c factorial equals m times 10 to the nth power, where m and n are integers, and m is not divisible by 10. What is the smallest possible value of n? Okay, so um, since a factorial, b factorial, c factorial, this is m times 10 to the nth power. But the 10 to the nth power, this, this can be divided into m times 2 to the nth power times 5 to the nth power. So um, since we have plenty of 2s to like roll around, that means um, our n value, n value depends, um, depends on number of, number of 5s there are. There are are in a factorial, b factorial, c factorial. We have this this um, formula that the number of factors, number of factors of five, five, four, n factorial, sorry, four, n factorial, this is equal to, um, this is equal to um, n over five and the floor of that, so the floor of n over five plus the floor of n over five squared, which is 25, um, plus the floor of n over 5 cubed, which is 125, plus n over um, 625, 625, which is 5 to the 4th power, plus and so on, right? Um, and so this is what we want to, want to use here. Just for sake of better um, understanding, let's just say that this is for x factorial. For x factorial, it's x over 5 floor plus x over 25 floor plus floor of x over 125 plus floor of x over 625 and so on and so to make this the smallest right to make our n value yeah so this n value smallest smallest best if um, best if x is right before um, right before power of 5 then we can say that a and b they can be 624 which is right what which is right before 625 um, and then our C can be 2006 minus 624, minus 624, um, which is going to be equal to 758, right? So we have our A, B, and C values. Um, and so if we just put them into this equation, that's going to be 2 times, um, because we have 2 of 624, right? And so it's 2 times 624 over 5 um, floor plus 624 over 25 floor plus 624, uh, 624 over 125 floor, um, and then we don't have this one because that's just going to be 0, um, and then we have plus 
758, right? So plus um, the floor of, yeah, plus the floor of 758 over 5, um, plus 758, 758 over 25 floor, plus 758 over 125 floor, plus 758 over um, 6, 625 floor, right? And then we don't ha have anything further because um, those are over 758, right? And so this is all going to be equal to 2 times, and this is going to be 125 minus 1, which is 124. I mean, the same thing, 25 minus 1, 5 minus 1, so that's going to be 124 plus 24, 24 plus 4, plus, and then this much, that's all going to be um, 151. Yeah, 151 plus 30 plus 6 plus 1, right? So this is going to be equal to 2 times 152 plus 188, right? And so this is going to be equal to 492. 492. So this is our answer. It's B. Number 23. Isosceles triangle ABC has a right angle at C. Point P is, is inside triangle ABC such that PA equals 11, PB equals 7, and PC equals 6. Right, so this much is 11, and this is 7, and this is equal to 6. And AC and BC have, have length S equals root A square root A plus B root 2, where A and B are positive integers. What is A plus B? Okay, so um, to do this, what we first want to do is we want to um, rotate ABC, C constant, right, um, by C. Um, yeah, um, and so um, if we do that, then we are going to have one more triangle that looks like this, and that will be just like that, right? And so that will fit there. Let's say that this point, that's, that's D, that's point D, and then the center point, that will be point E. And now we see that... PCE, so this angle, this angle is a 90 degree angle because this is a right angle and this and this angle is the same. And so this must be a right angle. And so that means PCE, PCE, this is a right isosceles triangle. This is angle and this is a triangle, right isosceles. Um, and so if we connect P and E, P, if, if we connect P and E like that, right? Um, so we are going to have this triangle, that's going to be a, a right isosceles, and um, we know the lengths. PC equals 6, this equals 6, this is 6, and then PA equals 11, PB equals 7, and same for here. Um, this is 6, this is 7, this is 11. Um, and so now we can get what PE is. So PE, this is going to be equal to, um, this is 1, 2, 1, 2, root 2. So th this is 6 root 2, 6 root 2, right? Um, and we know that this is right triangle. And now if we look at this triangle, right? So if we look at this triangle, then we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and then for PBE, PBE, um, that's going to be 11 squared between 7 squared plus 6 root 2 squared. And, and 11 squared, this is 121. And 7 squared is 49 plus this is 72. And this is 121, right? And so these two are equal. And so what that means is that, yeah, that means that this is also a right triangle, and since 11 is the hypotenuse, this is a right angle, right? So this is a right angle, um, and yeah, so, so that means BEP, BEP is right triangle. And as you can see by this line, um, D, E, and P, they are all on, on the same line, right? And so, so we have that to D, E, P on the same line, and um, now we want um, a plus B, right? And um, um, to get that, we first have to get the area. So the area would be this triangle plus this triangle plus this triangle, right? Uh, um, um, but then we know that this triangle is equal to this triangle, right? And so these two triangles together, that would just be equal to this one thing, right? And so we have B, C, E, P. We have B, E, C, P. And so we have to get this one now. And so this much is equal to this much, as you can see, right? Um, and so what we need now is this much, which was BECP, BECP, plus, and then DEB, right? DEB. Um, and then so if we draw that, that's going to be this plus this, right? But then, if, um, but then if you see, that's just this whole thing, which is this right triangle plus this right triangle, right? And so this is going to be equal to um, this right triangle plus this right triangle. So that is equal to um, BDP, right? BDP plus and then PEC, 
Um, and so if we just calculate each of those, BDP is going to be equal to 7 times 7 plus 6 root 2 times 1 half. So this is 1 half times 7 times 7 plus 6 root 2. And then plus PEC, this much is going to be 6 times 6 times 1 half. 6 times 6 times 1 half. And this is going to be equal to um, this much, which is 49 over, eight, 49 over 2 plus 21 root 2. And then plus, 30, plus 36 over 2. 36 over 2. And so this is, is all going to be equal to 85, 85 over 2 plus 21 root 2, right? Um, and so this is going to be the area. And that's going to be 1 half times this much squared. And so this is going to be equal to 1 half times a plus b root e. a plus b root e. And so it's, it's going to be equal to a over 2. Yeah, so a over 2 plus b over 2 root 2. And so since this and this, yeah, that's and that are the same, and 21 is equal to b over 2, that means a is going to be equal to 85, and b is going to be equal to 42, right? Um, and so we get a plus b, which is equal to 127, right? So 127 is our answer, it's e. Problem number 24. Let us be the set of all points x, comma, y in the coordinates such that this and this, um, what is the area of the subset s for which this much is less than or equal to 3 over 4? Right, okay, so first thing that we, we have to notice is that if we look here, if you put x instead of y, then if you change the y's to x's, right, um, then this is just going to be sine squared y plus sine y sine x plus sine squared x, and that's just going to be the same, right? That's just going to be the same. And so that means this whole thing is y equals x symmetrical over the line y equals x, right? Um, and the next thing thing we'll do is we have both of these sides, and we'll multiply sine x plus sine y to them, right? And so that's going to be sine x plus sine y times sine squared x minus sine x sine y plus sine squared y. This is going to be equal, that's going to be less than or equal to, less than or equal to 3 over 4 um, times sine x plus sine y, right? Um, and so that's going to be... So this much is sine cubed x, sine cubed x, plus sine cubed y, sine cubed y. Um, this is going to be less than or equal to 3 over 4 times sine x plus sine y, right? Um, and so here, let's just check a few x values. Um, if, x is, if x is equal to 0, right, um, then we will have, since these two will just cancel, that will just cancel, that means sine squared y is less than or equal to 3 over 4. So that means sine y is less than or sine of y is less than or equal to root 3 over 2, right? And so that gives that y is less than or equal to pi over 3, right? And if x equals pi over 6, right, um, um, then, then we're going to have, um, by the same thing, we're going to have sine y, sine y, this is going to be less than or equal to 1, right? And so y is going to be less than or equal to pi over 2, less than or equal to pi over 2, right? Um, and lastly, if x is equal to pi over 2, right, um, because that's our end value, that means, yeah, that gives us that um, same thing. So y is going to be less than or equal to pi over 6, right? So we have these values. Um, and now if we have a, a, a square of x's and y's, then we can plot those things, right? So here's our square. Um, let's say this is the x and this is the y side. And we start at 0 and our um, final point is pi over 2. So this is pi over 2, this is pi over 2. And now we can split it into thirds, like that. Um, and so this is going to be pi over 6, and this is going to be pi over 3. This is pi over 6 and pi over 3, right? Because of these two, right, then the line from 0 to pi, zero to pi over 6, that is going to be like that. Um, and then the line from pi over 6 to the end, that's just, just going to be like that. Um, and from here, we can use the fact that um, the whole thing is y equals x symmetrical, and so it's going to be symmetrical over over this over this line, right? And so that's going to give us the re the um, remaining line, which is this one, right? Um, and so we want the area of the interior of this, right? Um, so so um, that's going to get be so yeah, the, this is the area that we want. So the area is area. This is equal to the whole thing which is pi over 2 squared, and then minus those, these two, which is pi over 4, sorry, pi over 6 squared, 
minus one half, um, minus one half times um, pi over three squared, right? So this is pi squared times one over four, minus one over 36, um, minus one over 18. So this is gonna be pi squared times um, all over 36, right? So that will be nine minus one minus two. This is pi squared times one over six, which is equal to pi squared divided by six. Pi squared divided by six. And so this is our final answer, it's C. Our last problem, number, number 25. A sequence a1, a2, all the way of non-negative integers is defined by the rule a n plus 2 equals the absolute value of a n plus 1 minus a n for n is greater than or equal to 1. If a1 equals 999, a2 is less than 999, and a2 thousand six equals 1, how many different values of a2 are possible? Okay, so um, first of all, we can look for a n plus 3, right, because that's the next term, a n plus 3. This is going to be the absolute value of a n plus 2 plus, no, sorry, minus a n plus 1, right? Um, and this is, is gonna, going to be equal to the absolute value of a n plus 1 minus a n minus a n plus 1, like that. Here we have two possibilities if this is either positive or negative, right? And so if a n plus 1 is greater than a n, well, that means this is just going to be positive, and so these two are going to cancel. So a n plus 3 is going to be equal to the absolute value of negative a n, which is just the absolute value of a n. If a n plus 1, this is less than a n, then this is going to be negative, and so it's going to be a n, yeah, yeah, so a n plus 3 is going to be equal to the absolute value of a n minus 2 a n plus 1, right? Minus 2 a n, minus 2 a n plus 1. Gathering these two facts, facts together, um, then we can say that a n plus 3, yeah, so then we can say that a n plus 3 um, and a n, they always have the the same parity and this is just whether it's odd or even so this means that if a that means that if a n is odd a a n plus 3 is going to be odd if a n is even then a n plus 3 is also going to be even right um but then now we can apply that principle to a to a 2006 and a 2 since a 2006 equals 1 which is odd then we can see that a a 2 um and a 2 which is equal to a to the 2006 minus 3 times 668, right, 668, so, so it also has, has the same parity, this is going to be odd, right? And so what we have got is that A2 is an odd number, um, and that's one step, A2 is odd. And our next step is um, we, ha we, we have to look at the GCDs of A1 and A2, right? So if we say that the GCD of A1 and A2, A1 and A2, this is going to be M, right? Um, then that means that a1 equals m times something, and a2 equals m times something else, right? Um, um, and so now, with this, if we get a3, a3, this is going to be the absolute value of a1 minus a2. Um, and then this is all going to both have m in it, so this is going to be m times something else. And so if we do the same thing with a2 and a3, that means a4 is going to be the absolute value of a3 minus a2 which is also going to go um, um, which is also going to be m times something else right m times something entirely different right yes and you you can test this out if you want by just setting a1 equals 999 right so set a1 equals 999 and then say a2 equals something like 300 or something right and the greatest common divisor this is going to be 3 for here um, if you get a3, this is going to be 699, which is also a, a multiple of 3, and then a, a4 is dealing with these two numbers, so that's also going to be a multiple of 3, a5 is dealing with these two numbers, so that's also going to be a, a multiple of 3, and so on, right? So that's just like one example of that. Finally, this gives us the conclusion that a1, a2, a2, a3, a4, um, all the way to a n, um, this is going to be multiples of m, right? This is going to be multiples of m, and so that means a n is always going to be m times something, right? And so this means that since it's m, and m is a GCD of a1 and a2, that means it's going to be a multiple, multiple of GCD a1 and a2, right? Um, and then since a2006 equals 1, a2006 equals 1, so 1 equals m times something, right? Um, and but then since this is just one, that means m must be equal to one, right? And so the multiple of, of G, yeah, so the GCD of a1 and a2, this must be equal to one. And so GCD of a1 and a2, um, a2, this is equal to one. That means 
um, this means yeah means that a1 and a2 are mutually prime right and since we have the value of a1 which is 999 so this is going to be 999 and so that means a2 will not have a factor of 999 and so a2 no factor factor of 999 right and then 999 this is going to be equal to 3 cubed times 37 so a2 will have nothing of um some of like no multiples multiples of 3 or 37 right so that's our second step forward and lastly we can just combine all this information to get um that a2 must be odd from this one a2 must not have multiples of 3 or 37 right no multiples of 3 or 37 right so first let's get all the odd numbers um since a2 has to be less than 999 um our limits are from 1 to 998 right 998 Odd numbers, this is just dividing by 2, which is 499 odd, right? And then of these 499 odd, we have to take out multiples of 3 or 37, right? And so that's just going to be 499 um, minus multiples of 3 within this range, um, minus multiples of 37 within that range, plus multiples of 3 times 37, which is, um, what's 3 times 37? Which is 101, right? No, 111, right? Um, and so this is going to be 499 minus there are 166 multiples of 3, 166 multiples of 3, and then minus there's 13 multiple there's 13 multiples of 37, and then there are um, four multiples of 111, right? So this is all going to be equal to um, 499 minus, and then this all sums to 175. So this is going to be 324. So the answer is 324. It's B. So that was it for the AMC 12B from the year 2006 and thank you for watching.